right, we're here, and I feel like we're good to go. Feeling pretty happy about my setup here. Hey, everybody. Um, again, this is just me practicing, so it's going to sound weird that I'm talking to myself. This is just me preparing for my uh, my the streams I plan to be doing on Discord and stuff. But um, hey, hey. <clears throat> We're here with, um, oh, well, <laughs> welcome to my FMOD live stream. Really happy to have everybody who's here, basically here. Um, and what we're Hey doing guys, today, it's John. Sorry, what we're doing today is continuing our Hellblade, well, continuing our FMOD stream centered around Hellblade or Hellblade F mod and mod and stream and if you're new to this you don't know what the FM um L mod stream if you're new to my to this particular um stream or new to Patreon essentially this is going to be a Patreon this is going to be one of the streams that I do on my Patreon um and it'll be done once a week not once a week it'll be done once a month uh and essentially what F mod is is a series where I replicate audio systems I hear in games that I play or watch and discover and enjoy, or me creating systems that I would like to see or I'm curious about in terms of implementation in a game. But it's literally a fun way for me to just practice FMOD. And what we are doing is continuing um, with where we left off last time, which was creating these, these quote unquote systems. I want to recreate a system in Hellblade, um, which is kind of like the voice changing that happen throughout the gameplay. Cause Sinua hears voices and the game basically incorporates those voices and the voices change based on how the player plays the game. I'm not going to delve back into that, but if you are curious about the inception of, or if you're curious about how this particular stream started and how I got to the particular point, please go check out the first video. Cause it'll be a series of three, each video will be an hour long. And by the end of the three videos, we should have some systems in place that we can screw around with. So <clears throat> first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up, so let's see. Hellblade, no commentary. I'm gonna pull up our no commentary video. We were using it last time. Ooh. As like a reference to, you know, jump back to. And what I had said we were gonna do today was, um, we were going to start implementing the voices for the statue um, trigger. And if you forgot what the statue trigger is, basically, I'm going to make this bigger. In Senua, not in Senua, in Hellblade, um, whenever a statue is activated, voices start talking to the player. And the voices basically try and goad the player into approaching it and also using a particular system in the game called Focus, you know. So I'll just showcase what that looks like real quick. Her dear beloved. What's she doing? Let's fast forward a little bit. There's a lot of software. Okay. So how this should work is hold on. Oh, darn it. He's getting out of focus. Let's see, shall we? Plus, alright, so right here in this little corner is the statue. Essentially, I feel like when the player gets to a particular area or is in a particular proximity to the statue or whatever. It's not a statue, but you know what I mean. The statue lights up, and when the statue lights up, that's when particular voices start playing for the player. So let's check that out. Okay. The Northman. It didn't this time. It did the first time. So let me go back and find that. Again, I haven't played this game or like held like held like I haven't bought the game and purchased it to like really test out the system so we're really just seeing how it works 
end game and kind of theorizing how that might play out. But the system that I'm talking about does, for a fact, start at the first statue. And I feel like the voices start at the first statue, obviously, so that the player knows like it's doubly important. I'll, 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 like Obviously, when the... I don't say obviously, but when the statue lights up, I feel like that does entice the player to go towards it. But when the voices start chattering, I feel like it kind of increases the level of importance. You have to take a closer look to see. Why isn't she focusing? She needs to focus now. So, and as we see at the second statue, that didn't happen. So it makes me wonder if... I'm going to try and find a third like glowy thing and maybe see if maybe the voices start chattering again uh, let's see she needs to remember the way back what happens when she finds it the money. everything will burn concentrate concentrate on where you're going she needs to remember the path everything will burn then how will she find the way back <laughs> she won't she won't be able to tell yeah i thought the voices were just Burning slaves like for me, they just scream like helpless pigs. Well, screw it. We're just worried about the first one. I don't want to waste too much time trying to search for stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm just trying to replicate this first system here. So, what I've done already is create voices. I've attempted to be British, fun times. The rune beckons. Sorry, I'm gonna turn this off. The rune beckons. I hope we y'all can hear this. Let me see how loud this is. The rune beckons. Eh. The rune beckons. Turn up a little bit. The rune beckons. The oh, rune beckons. Does she see? She must move closer. She doesn't know. Will it help us? She needs to focus. Focus. Her Another thing I wanted to do too was have three mic three mic positions if you if you go back to the first video like go through this but the voices kind of appear at three different levels of depth one sounds like it's right up against the mic like this one sounds like at a sounds like how um, a voice would be recorded if one voice sounds like it was recorded at a regular distance away from the mic and then one sounds a little further away so i created three phrases at each mic distance the rune beckons first three are close these three are close these three are midway and these three are far and then the next thing i had was a water trigger so um if you go back to the first video i talk about how i feel like the voices kind of appear in two ways there's there are voices that um happen repeatedly for example granted you know, you, I feel like a good uh, example of that is in battles, where like whenever Sinua is fighting, there are always voices um, that appear during battle. So it's almost like it's a system that just takes place, you know, over over the over the course of the game. They don't really change, um, and so there are voices that are made for a specific point in time. Let's. Uh, and essentially what it means is like if there's somebody behind Sinua, there will always be a voice that's like, hey, watch out. You know, no matter what battle it is, like you'll have that. Or you'll have the voice that are, that'll go, oh, she's almost dead. So, um. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not explaining this well. Um, I'm not explaining it well at all. Oh, yeah, 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 I am. So, <laughs> let me go back. Three systems. There's one system where the voices are just there and whenever a player interacts with that object these vo voices will be cycled through i wanted to use that initially for the the uh, the runes i don't um, based on what you saw in the video like the first rune you hear the voices that entice the player to go forward but in the second room they second room they didn't um so i don't know if this that i don't know if the rune voices are there throughout the entirety of the game but what is th there throughout the entirety of the game are the voices that appear during battles. So, like, I feel like that was a charge attack, and when 
the the enemy is charging obviously you hear voices that are like you must stop him go hit him and so i feel like no matter what battle you're in you're going to have those battle voices that are there throughout and so i'm creating that system but for the statue so every time a player is near a statue you're always going to hear voices that entice the player to go towards it just like if you're ever in a battle you know you'll always hear voices that if a uh a monster is or an enemy is charging you'll hear voices it's just they're static it's a static system that just will appear throughout the game you do it once and don't have to change anything the next thing i had was um another system where like um, there are voices, but it's almost like voices for a cutscene. You'll hear them when the player gets to a certain point in the game, but then you don't, you won't hear those voices again. So I'll just call them cutscene triggers. They happen once, and they don't happen again. So I had like a water cutscene trigger because in the beginning of the game, um, I have to call it a cutscene trigger. Happens once, doesn't happen again after that cutscene, and I came up with a fake story that like Senua had a harrowing experience when they were young with water and so when Senua back in the beginning passes like a you know when Senua approaches like is walking and approaches water or something like these voices will start playing you know but after to to tell to kind of progress the story you know so Senua so yeah uh, this, I probably sound like I'm really confusing. <laughs> it probably sounds really confusing, but cutscene trigger. It only happens one time. It progresses the story, and so I created like a custom set of voices that uh, would play after um, the gameplay. Basically, says that Senua has a fear of water. So when Senua Senua approaches, um, I don't know, like a waterfall. Cause there's a waterfall somewhere later on in the game. Let me see. Not later on in the game, but early. I mean, there's water everywhere. But there's a, there is a particular place where there's, like, a pretty waterfall. Oh, Lord, trying to find it. But it, either way, I wanted there to be, like, a cutscene that plays when Senua approaches the water. I think it's over here. Let's go back. And, like, when Senua approaches the water, the voices will start. Or maybe even here, where, like, Senua is high above water. And maybe the game says... So I know I had a bad experience with water, you know, and so the, you hear the voices that are like, oh my goodness, don't fall in, oh no, but then once Sinua passes this particular point in the game, so it's a cutscene, you don't hear those voices anymore. So what I wanted to do is to go ahead and implement this audio into FMOD. So, I have, I last, um, the last video, I got everything ready to be exported. Um, there's probably more stuff that I would do, obviously, like, I would master these and get them all all the voices at the same volume but because we're just because this is just practice with fmod um, i'm not going to worry about that so i'm going to go ahead and export all these little bitties play this track yes All right, so let's see let's see what happens here. Uh, 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 uh. I've done this before, exporting things by in batches. I'm gonna make sure it works, and if it works, then we're gonna be golden. Um, Hellblade. Hellbalde. That's how I spelled it. Oops, forgot. Oops, 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 oops. Lord. Okay. Okay, if this works correctly, I'll go ahead and talk about what this looks like. Oh, okay, it is working correctly. All right, so for any of those, for any of those, for those of you who use FL Studios and don't know this, Rabbit, if you would like to just have each audio track exported, or if you want each audio file exported without having to, you know, click, highlight, Go to file, click export. What you can do is get all of your individual files set on their own individual track here, like what I've done. Go to export and go to export. Go to export and then click all playlist tracks from song start. And what happens is 
the program will go ahead and export everything out per track for you automatically. Um, and when doing that, you can also choose, uh, right? Mm -mm. You can't choose the format. The output format, if you do that, is going to automatically be WAV, um, which works for what I need it to do, which works for FMOD. But just an FYI, if you'd like to export multiple uh, stems without having to do them individually, uh, export all playlist tracks from songs. Art, boom, you're good. Okay, so we've got all of our... Oh, you didn't even see it export, did you? I'll do it one more time. You didn't see anything I just did. Haha. <laughs> So, I, I have everything set up where each um, voice clip or voice clip that I would use that I want isolated on its own track. And so, rather than highlighting each one and clicking export 18 times, what you can do is go to export. I don't think you can see this on the screen. No, you can't. You can't see me accessing the file. But I said it multiple times. Go to export all playlist tracks from song start. Figure out which folder you want to put all the stems in. And then, ooh, wee. that's not in there yet. Select the folder. You'll have to export it as a wave, but all you do is hit background rendering, and then it exports each individual audio file. And you should be seeing that. You should be seeing each individual audio file being exported because it turns red. Um, but there, we've got the audio for the first two systems set. So now we're going to switch over to fmod here okay we got our system we got our uh, we got our event we've got trigger set um i have this enabled labeled as wf voices but i'll, I'll say cutscene cutscene vox and i'll make it water boom statue trigger and then plot point will be the one that we use later we haven't we haven't worked on the plot point audio yet but we're gonna start with statue trigger. Okay, so how do I wanna do this? Mm. Oh, okay, so I think what we'll have to do is just have different events. So this is gonna be the statue. I'll call it Vox statue here. Um, we're gonna go grab our audio clips volume F mod. All right, I'm going to drag them in here. Now, um, in the game, oh Lord, everything's labeled. <laughs> All right, hold on before I do anything. So we're going to go back to FL Studios. So I exported everything and I don't know what anything is because I haven't labeled anything. So let's go back. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to label this. I'm gonna do statue trigger, uh, sorry, statue trigger, close mic, one, close mic A, forget it. All right, so what, what happened is when everything exported, it's all exported as track one, track two, track three, so I don't know what anything is. All right, statue trigger, close B, oops. Sorry, friends. All right, there we go. All right, so let's label these real quick. Statue, close C. Oh my lord, I can. All right, we got mid here. Statue trigger, mid A. Trigger. B. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty like trigger far A. I'm pretty bad with stuff like this. Um, I've slowly gotten better at it because I've got um, working on a project where I'm an F mod and just I I had to I had to you know. Cutscene trigger. Water. Cutscene trigger. Water. Oh, cutscene trigger. Uh, close A. 
I'm just gonna stay close. Cutscene trigger close A, cause it's, I'm only gonna do one cutscene, so it's not like I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff. But then back to what I was saying, um, when you're doing F mod, it's almost like, I'm not saying it's impossible to be disorganized, but I feel like it really forces you into attempting it to some degree, because if you don't, it's just, it's insane. Um, like, I've got an Excel sheet with all of the stems I have, or the stems that have been created so I can keep track of everything and what needs to go in game. Uh, yeah, like Excel has become my best friend. <laughs> I'm currently recording all of the audio that needs to be recorded, like singing and some woodwind stuff and guitar, and it's just, it's helping me stay on track because if I if I don't freaking do it, I something is something would completely would absolutely get overlooked. All right, everything's labeled here FLP, and the game I'm talking about is, uh, is called Gecko Gods. So I'm working on that. And really, really um, happy with just the team and everything that we've created, and I don't really, I really hope people like what we've done. Uh, I really enjoy playing the game. <laughs> like it's, it's just it's been a pleasure of a project. It's been a pleasure of a project. All right. So exporting stuff part two. Like, all right. Let's go to mod. All right. Now that we're here, um, cluster seams. Okay. Now we can actually start this. So we've got our Vox statue. We've got everything wonderfully labeled. A little, like, a little, you know, verbose, but it's okay. All right. I don't know if verbose is what I mean. Um, a little, a, a bit long in, in the tooth in terms of titles, but whatever. Okay, so we've got, we want some cycling, right? We don't want the same voice to play each time. There's also overlapping of voices. Um, I, I don't know if that makes sense. What, what's happening in my head is I'm realizing when I think about what happened in the game is if I really wanted to make this sound like the game, I'd probably need like nine of everything. Have need nine close, nine far, and like nine mid. Primarily because what you'll hear is you'll hear a close, you hear a close voice, then you'll hear a far away, uh, far away voice. You might hear a mid voice followed by another close voice again. Um, And I would like for things to cycle through. So let me let me let me show you what it looks like. What it looks like it sounds like in my head. Oh God, what's happening? Uh, I think. Oi. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's cutscene trigger. Yeah, cutscene trigger. Oi. All right. So next issue. You would think I you would think I would know what I'm doing. Apparently I don't. So see I ha I have everything muted. Everything's muted. <laughs> so we're gonna try this again. Exporting this. We're gonna unmute all of the audio so that when it converts, it converts to have sound. <clears throat> F mod. Alright, third time, third, maybe fourth time's a charm. Okay. Alright, so did this again. Let's go back to F mod. Alright, so I think the best thing for me to do first is to kind of show you what I think. Uh, I think what's best is for me to show you what I, what I think it looks like in terms of... Uh, everything <laughs> I'd export another time um, give me a second but I I think um, if I were to line the audio up on this on the um, timeline I feel like 
it would go close vocal followed by far followed by mid followed by close followed by maybe mid followed by far followed by maybe a close again followed by mid by far so, so uh, let's let's spell this out so we got close yeah so we got mid and there's not a lot of space between the vocals so like you might have something like this you know what I'm gonna do add audio track add audio track and then we'll get mm, close mid So we have a close one. Oh, I'm still doing that. That sucks. Close, mid, and like uh, that was a far one. Far. We'll do mid A here. Boom. And then we'll probably have maybe like close D right here. So there is overlapping of voices, right? Um, we'll have like uh, we'll have a far B. mid B here and then we'll have close C Doot -doot. close C close C uh, mid C oh lord I'm doing the wrong one this is why labeling is important I did those are all the cutscene ones I'm doing the stone <laughs> The the uh so the statue or the room so close A we got mid A and then we have uh, far A here sometimes they should overlap and we'll have close B here mid B it's like spacing's everything for this stuff mid B Mid C, oh, let's change that. We want far, we want a little bit of far. We want to put some mid, and then we'll do close C here coming in. Let's put that one back a little bit. Uh, close C, uh, far C with mid C. Okay. When I think of the system itself, this is kind of what I, I think of, how the voices would interact. So let's play this and just see how it sounds. The room beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? She needs to focus. Will it help us? She must move closer. Will show us the way? She needs to focus. Okay, so obviously these happen way too fast. So let's add some space to these. It needs to sound like natural. Okay. We're going to get the spacing good. The room beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? She needs Sorry. The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Does she see? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She... The rune beckons. Okay, this needs to be a little quicker. The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? She needs to focus. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? Sometimes, like... Does she see? Will it help us? Like, does she see? She needs to help us. It seems like it's the same thought, so, like, having them overlap quickly kind of makes sense. Does she see? She needs to... Does she see? She needs to focus. Yeah, like that. No. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? She needs to... No. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? She needs to fo... No. Focus. Hurry. Does she see? She needs to focus. Will it help us? Let's see. She needs to focus. Focus. She must move. Focus. She must... Ah, okay. So I got some... I want to move some of these close... Close mics closer, because they both... She see? She needs to focus. She must move closer. She see? She needs to focus. She must move closer. Will it help us? Closer. Will it help us? She we'll needs show to us focus. the way. Closer. Will it help us? She needs to we'll focus. show us the way. I feel like, will it help us? 
to show us the way needs to be like there. <laughs> Osa, will it help us? Will show us the way. She needs to focus. Osa, will it help us? Will show us the way. She needs to focus. Osa, will it help us? Okay. Also, like, they need to make sense. The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Like, focus, focus now. She needs to focus. Like, they need to be near each other. Just a thought that it makes more sense. The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? 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 She needs to focus. I ha okay, I have too many. She needs to focus. Oh, I have the same thing repeating. That's why. Uh huh. See, I had a mid C here and a mid C there. She needs to focus. Does she see? Beginning. The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? Okay, a little bit of space between that. She needs to focus. Does she see? She needs to focus. Does she see? Will it help us? She must. She must move closer. I think these two. I know <laughs> everything's out of whack now. She see? She must. No, we gotta sit here. She see? She must move closer. She see? She must. She see, she must move close. She see, she must move close. Will it help us? She see, she must move close. Will show us the way. Ooh, you know what? I think will it help us? Should be over here. Will it help us? Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? She must move closer. Will show us the way. I feel like that is a bit more natural, what I've got set up here. So, right now, we just have it to where these will just will just play at random. Will it help us? The rune beckons. Like, it'll, it'll repeat itself if I do this. Uh, I like, ooh, I'm going to do a loop region here so that we, we know the game knows to just, like, repeat this over and over again. <laughs> it sounds, it'll repeat over and over again. And you'll hear it when there's a trigger. So right now, will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? She must move closer. Will show us the way. Will it help us? The rune beckons. Okay, so obviously, right? This is how it has. This is how it's set up. And it would be so draining for this to be what repeats all the time. And so I'm thinking, for each one of these instances, we're probably going to need three. <laughs> so I need to do some recording here, um, in a bit. But let's uh. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She does. There, there's a myriad of ways that you can set this up. What I could do is um have like a little tiny loop region here, and a transition region to. Thing. Let's see. And like, I think this region could just loop, and then when it's activated, when the statue's activated, it just switches over. So let's see. It would be. The destination to statue on no. Like it doesn't have to be a loop region. Like we literally could have you know like a marker here. That's called loop region. Like there's so many different ways you can do this. Um, but what I might do is Will help. Sorry, we're gonna have this loop. And then when the statue trigger is on one, you see it down here in the green area. I wish I could highlight it for you, but you see my mouse right here in the bottom. Go to the bottom left and then kind of slowly move your eyes to the right. And you're going to see this little green bar down here. But can you even see my cursor? I don't think you can. I need to change that in OBS. Oh, capture cursor. Okay, we're good. All right, but we're down here. So essentially what's going to happen is this is just going to repeat. Will it help? Oh, we should Will it help? Will it help us? <laughs> I guess not. Oh, that's not a repeat region. Sorry. So this is a loop region. So if you want things, if you want, um, for example, over a long period of time, you want an instant change, you can use a loop region. Uh, and what I want is for this to loop indefinitely. So I'm going to add a loop region here. And basically, when you have a loop region, the cursor just follows that region forever. So when I press play here, Rune sorry, 
I see that? It just... It loops for forever. Um, I don't have to do that. I could... I could have it, like, right here where it loops for forever. Right? And then as soon as I turn the statue trigger on... If you look at the uh, at the right over here, where it has the where it says overview and has parameters, when I turn statue trigger on, it'll change to the statue audio. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus, hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? She must move closer. Will show us the way. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus, hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? She must move closer. Will show us. Now, what I don't have is something. I don't have something that will transition back to that loop whenever statue trigger is off. So right now, when the player is near the statue, this will, these voices will keep playing even when the player walks away from the statue. Um, because we don't have something that says when statue trigger is zero, something should happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another um, transition region. Do the statue on. I know that that's confusing to have two statues on. We're gonna rename this. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We're gonna. Hmm. We're gonna name this one. Statue off. Bada bing, easy. So we're gonna set this destination to statue off, and the parameter condition is when statue trigger is zero. Boop down here. It'll automatically switch. The voice will automatically stop. Um, so we got it here. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She the doesn't know. The Focus. Statue Hurry. Area. She needs to. The voice is cut off. Now what we could do, because it's very abrupt, and we want it to sound nice, what we can do is create a transition region. And so what'll happen is. This blue represents um, this right here. So essentially a transition region just shows how do you want the beginning of something to fade into something new. So this blue right here is basically the beginning and how we want to fade the beginning of this loop into the statue off section. And so what we'll do Um, is we'll just have the voices just gradually fade away. And so what would happen right now is, right now we would have the beginning of this fading out, and then it'll start right here. And I can play that for you. And when I turn the statue trigger to zero, you're going to see the voices slowly fade out, and then it'll be right here at the start of this loop. So let's let's try it. Statue trigger on. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She Actually, I said that wrong. I apologize. So what this means is whenever, because I don't have it to where the transition happens at the beginning of the loop, the transition happens anywhere. So if the player is doing something and it happens right here in the loop, the loop will fade out here and then boom. We're at the start. If the player leaves the statue and the vo voices are in this section right here, what will happen is, starting from this section, it'll fade out, doo -doo -doo, and then it'll come here because we have that fade out implemented. So let's let's let, I'm gonna screw around with that for a bit so you can just see how that looks. It'll play when I turn this to zero. You'll see it come to the transition region, fade out, and then, boop, it'll pop here. To statue the statue off. All right, here we go. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. She need. All right, let's try it again. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? And uh, I'll try it. Show it again. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. And what you could do is you could make it longer, right? So it feels less abrupt. All right, let's 
do it. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. She needs to focus. You can adjust the fade. So it feels a little bit more natural. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? Alright, that one was nice. Claire, what's Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. There's that one. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Does she see? Okay. Hold on a second. Um, I'm, I'm streaming. Give me a second. I'll get it. I'll get it. Thank you. Okay, um, there, there are different ways that we could do this too. Like, we have it fading out. We could also have it set up to where, um, this is on a 2D, 2D timeline. We could have it be to where the voices, if we did a 3D timeline, right, the voices could, uh, basically just get quieter as the player backs away from the statue, um, Actually, let's see if we can do that. We're going to dupla. We're not going to duplicate that. We're going to make a new event. We're going to make a 3D timeline. Okay. Fox statue. 3D. So, I'm explaining this like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I, I don't. This is practice. We're going to figure it out. But I'm going to get three tracks set up just like I have over here. And the beautiful thing about FMOD is you can highlight everything. Copy it and literally just paste it into a new event. Doot. Okay. Um. Hmm. So, as you can see, our global triggers have carried over to th to this event because there are probably going to be statues all over the game. So, and this particular system will apply to all the statues that are all over the game global so um now i i made a comment about how this would sound uh and so let's say statue is on right we could keep statue on like we, we can get rid of the transition region right because we have it here we're going to right click and we're just click remove transition timeline and what should happen is when statue is on right Trigger, trigger. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Yeah. Does she see? She must move closer. Show us the way. So that does work. The only downside is that, oh, it, the only downside is the panning from left to right. I don't want that, but I would like for, uh, I would like for the, um, audio to fade. Uh, I don't think this changes anything. Let's see. Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Hurry. She needs to focus. Yeah, so I don't like the left-right panning on this, but I do like how the voices go as you as the player um, walks away from the um, sound, the voices go away. So if I could get rid of, like, the x-axis, I would actually like this. Um, so because of the panning effect, and I don't know how to get rid of that panning effect. I don't think this would be for us. What we could do, possibly in this, is have a... Let's say there's a parameter. Which, there is a parameter, right? It'll be player proximity. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Player proximity to the statue. Um, and so let's say we would create a parameter for that. And I'm doing this because I want the audio to fade away as the player walks away from the statue. Um, and so what we will use for this one, we won't use discrete, which is like zero to one, like hitting a switch. We're going to use continuous because we want um, the audio to slowly fade out as the player walks away. And um, sorry, we're going to do player, player prox statue. We're going to make it global because it's going to happen for every um, statue that we come across. 
So what we'll do is we're going to set player proximity to the master. Do we want to do that? We might do that for today. Um, and so what we want is um, player proximity, like one is like right on top and we'll figure out how we want those voices to sound. And maybe this isn't the best thing to do. We're just effing around right now. But um, we could have player proximity always be zero, like at one. Well, no, we can't do that because it's proximity to statue. Well, I'm sorry. Either way, we got player proximity. We're going to tie that to the master. Um, so what we're going to do to make that work, we're going to go down to the bottom and you're going to see a little, you're going to see fader and a little white arrow. It says automation modulation. That's what we're going to click on. And we're going to add a curve. We want to tie the player proximity to master track. Boom, we got them connected. So we don't want it to be right on top, but we want the voices to be kind of loud when we're close. This is something that you would have to test out in uh, an FMOD, like in the game. Um, just to see like what feels right in terms of how loud the voices sh should be. Um, but let's say the, cause when we look at the game, right? I feel like the voices start when the player is like pretty close to the statue. Let me make this is so small. I'm sorry, y'all. Teeny weeny. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger and we're gonna go back to that uh, statue scene. Like, I feel like the player is pretty close to the statue when it like highlights. Um, back that thing up real quick. internet is having a toin. You know, it's probably gonna, I'm gonna refresh it and it'll probably give me an ad. YouTube is like, you've been chilling here for a bit too long. I need to the that. world of men. Okay, so that's the second one. Okay. I'm trying to just bypass the throw some in the, like, even though the cinematography is like where the game is important, we don't care about that right now because we're doing something else. Two have a pot. Finua gets pretty close. Like, I think she gets pretty close to her statue when it lights up. To play in this story. I tell Finua is like pretty, pretty close. I'd say like. Boom. Like it's what? What would you say for that? Like maybe eighty. And the voices are like loud. Um, let's just say the voices. So AD, like she's already there. Like she's on the, she's on it. Um, but when do we want it to fade away? Like, I guess at 80. Well, the voices should be gone. Uh, I don't know. This is like again. This is one of those things where it would make more sense if you tested this out in game. Like you can theorize in F mod, but it doesn't really make sense till you like play it. And so, and since you can't gauge in game what eighty percent proximity to the statue actually is in the game, we're just gonna have to play it by ear. But then let's do this. Oh, you don't hear anything. Why do we not hear anything? Player proximity to the statue is one. Hold on. Oh, that's why. I did something weird. Okay, boom. Here we go. So uh Sinua, let's let's say eighty let's say eighty activates when you're eighty Ah, it has to be past. Okay, let's say it activates at eighty, right? Um and you start hearing voices immediately. Mm. The whole reason I'm doing this is because I would like the voices to fade out as the player walks away. That's what I want. But the player start. The play the player starts when you're really close to the freaking statue. Um, I'm thinking having the voices fade out is not important, <laughs> just because of that. Like I think it would be cooler if like this would make more sense to me if, let's say, the voices start, um, like. Not here, but like 
when you're when the voices start far away and you start hearing the voices and you're like oh i think a statue was close and this would happen like when you're like maybe 50 like when you're halfway to the statue but you can't see it maybe you start hearing the voices um like as like little whispers at 50 and then they're full-blown their whispers at 50 and then they slowly start to get louder kind of like a hot and cold type situation but that's not what we have in this game the game is pretty much like you see it it lights up and the voices start so i don't think this is necessary actually so you know what we're going to delete this so we're going to go down here we have add curve on the left never remo remove down here on the bottom right where it says player proximity right here or the automation screen we're going to click remove we're going to get rid of that it doesn't make sense and we're also going to get rid of this preference So we got Will it help us? The rune beckons. She doesn't know. Focus. Boom. And it fades out. It's rough for it's rough around the edges, but we can do. Okay, so we got the vo the statues set, but what we what I feel is we need to have three voices at least for each of these. Um I've only got two minutes left, so we're gonna save that for the next stream my last stream um i was gonna try and set up maybe i can set up the actually what we're gonna do for the next stream if i have time we're gonna finish this and if i have time we're gonna work on the plot point trigger i don't think the cutscene one is that important or how about this i am more interested in trying to create the plot point system than i am the cutscene water one so next stream we're gonna record some additional voices and we're gonna make some uh I guess we're going to make some, what's the word? Oh, Lord. We're going to make some bundles. We're going to have some audio bundles in here. And so that way, each time it repeats, you'll hear something different. We'll randomize it. So you might hear the same thing, but like, we'll, we'll be, um, the amount of variation you can get will be, you know, varied wild, uh, widely. And then after we do that, if we have time, we'll try and set up, um, some plot uh, plot point triggers and if you don't remember what this is it's essentially when you play hellblade um Sinua's voices are very um doubtful of her ability and i thought it would be really cool if like as each boss is beaten or completed the plot point increases by a point and the next time there's like a major boss or a major um event the voices slowly become more and more encouraging. I thought that'd be cool. So if we can get that implemented, that'd be dope. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, that's it for video two of F Modern for the week. Uh, thank you for those who came to watch the video, for those who are watching the video and have watched it. Hopefully you're learning something alongside me and that's it for today. All right, later.